Welcome to Be Less Stupid. I'm your host, John Hotchkiss. I'm here in downtown Los Angeles for an event featuring Democratic presidential candidate Beto O'Rourke. When Beto got into the race, he was polling at about 9%. Today, polls have him at about 1%. Campaign staff have had a hard time figuring out what it is that has caused his precipitous decline in the polls. Prior to the third debate, Beto was looking for an opportunity to propel himself into the top tier of Democratic candidates. This week, Beto called out his opponent, Pete Buttigieg. However, it's a feud of very little consequence. It's like discovering that there's a feud going on between Olaf and Mr. Potato Head. It's a feud that nobody cares about. The thing that people are interested in is what's going on between Buzz and Woody and the princess who turned stuff frozen. Not what's going on between Olaf and Mr. Potato Head. For Be Less Stupid, I'm the host, John Hotchkiss. Welcome to Be Less Stupid. I'm your host, John Hotchkiss. Let's get right to it. Democratic voters have been asking one question. It's the same question that viewers of Friends had about Ross and Rachel. When are Bernie and Elizabeth finally going to do it? Okay, look, Democrats' real question is this. What the hell happened to Beto O'Rourke's campaign? When Beto got into the race, he was polling at 10%. More recently, he's dropped to 1%. If he gets any less popular, voters are going to start calling him rectal cancer. No more walls, no more cages, no more separating families, no more killing kids. Now look, that clip that you just saw is from a Beto event that I went to just a few days ago. And in just a bit, I'm going to argue that Democrats who wrote him off as an idyllic pretty boy whose lack of experience and gravitas means that at a dinner with Biden, Warren, and Sanders, he would be at the kids' table, you should give this guy a second look. Last year, Beto came within three points of beating America's most hated senator, Ted Cruz. Since then, though, voter enthusiasm has turned into voter fatigue. A year ago, Beto was thrilling Texas crowds with dynamic speeches that went viral about racism, patriotism, and the NFL. This year, voters are avoiding him the same way that a naive supermodel would avoid Bill Cosby today at a wine tasting party. Last year, Beto surprised Texans and the media and became more than a candidate to support if you just hated Ted Cruz. He became a candidate that you voted for because you liked his youthful energy, his skateboarding, and his ideas about how to make the lives of middle-class voters better. And yet, something happened. Something bad. Something not good. Something that looks like this. Some people say that after losing to Ted Cruz, Beto's decision to run for president seemed like hubris. It's like buying a model rocket one day and the next day thinking that you're qualified to be an astronaut. Others say that Beto hasn't distinguished himself from his opponents, adding that he hasn't made a credible argument for why you should support him. Then there's Pete Buttigieg. By comparison, Beto is an old shoe, and Mayor Pete is a shiny new toy for the media to focus on. Plus, there's the observation made by former Congressman Barney Frank, who told the Boston Globe, and I'm quoting, Beto may be regretting that he's not gay. While Beto's youth and looks were a plus in his race against Ted Cruz, those qualities in the national race reveal the fact that you're also a political novice compared to your opponents who have impressive resumes and dozens of years of public service. Beto also had a few missteps early on in the campaign. A joke about helping his wife occasionally raise their kids made some voters call out his white privilege. An article in Vanity Fair quoted the congressman answering a question about being president by saying, I was born to be in this. He says people misunderstood his answer. He meant he was born to do public service, not that he was destined to be in the race for the president. However, the damage was done. Rewrite 
our immigration laws in our own image. We're going to free every single dreamer from any fear of deportation. We're going to make them citizens in this, their true home country. Now, as this clip shows, the crowd at Beto's weekend event in Los Angeles was only about 300 people. The crowd was so small, you'd think Beto was giving away free herpes. The weak turnout is the clearest indication that polls that put him at 1% support among voters are either exactly right or inflating his popularity. Both Bernie and Elizabeth Warren have had Los Angeles events that drew multiple thousands of people. However, 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 what the crowd lacked in numbers, it made up for an enthusiasm for Beto and dedication to his campaign. Because there is absolutely no doubt that Beto is a dynamic and passionate speaker who ignites a crowd's emotion, their faith in community, and their outlook to the future. The very deep and dark shit that is afoot in America what? right now. Some people like his commitment to climate change. Some people like the compassion that he shows for immigration. However, lots of people were there because after the massacre at the Walmart in El Paso, the district that Beto used to represent in Congress, Beto became the only Democrat running for president to put solving the problem of mass shootings at the center of his campaign. What's, what do you think is the most important issue for you right now? For me, it's gun control. Yeah? Yes. And how come? Because of all these killings that, that happen, if, they, if these persons don't have those guns that destroy people, they cannot do so much damage. And it has nothing to do with the Second Amendment. Uh, you know, it's just the guns that are dangerous. And they're not really to kill a bear or, or, or nothing, it's to destroy lives. So to me, that's very important. Beto O'Rourke is the only Democrat who says yes when asked, are you coming for our guns? For example, what a hippo, that we lose 40,000 lives to gun violence in America every single year, yeah. that we don't have background checks, we don't have red flag laws, we willingly sell AK-47s and AR-15s, <laughs> machines of war designed and engineered and sold to the militaries of the world to kill people effectively, efficiently, in as great a number as possible. 22 killed in El Paso in under three minutes, 10 killed in Dayton, Ohio in under 40 seconds. When the Second Amendment was proposed and adopted and ratified, it took three Beto says that if he's elected, he will call for a mandatory buyback program of so-called assault weapons, the AR-15 and the AK-47, the weapons used in nearly every mass shooting in the last 10 or 15 years. This is an idea whose time has come because no one needs an AR-15. The reason people love them is because they are fun to shoot. And they are, by the way, really fun to shoot. And look, a restriction on ownership of these military style weapons won't come this year or next. And it may not come in five years, but it will come someday. There'll be a lot of kicking and screaming, but the government has a plan for that those people will be shot. I'm kidding, of course. The people who are opposed will be picked up by soldiers in black helicopters, detained in underground bunkers at offshore black op sites, and forced to listen to Joni Mitchell's big yellow taxi until the government can pry that weapon from their cold dead hand. The point is, NRA members are going to need some time to get used to the idea that the rest of America will no longer tolerate mass shootings like the one in El Paso, at the Pulse nightclub, at the Pittsburgh synagogue. 15 years ago, gun owners were emphatically opposed to gay marriage. But thanks to time, public pressure, and will and grace, a majority of them came to see that gays had just as much right to be in a miserable sexless marriage as heterosexual people. And look, who knows, if red state Americans agree to give up their AR-15s, I gotta say, I think that I could convince Democrats to take 
avocado toast off of every menu in the United States. Look, Beto's gun control message will help distinguish him in the primaries. He's worthy of your time to listen to. He's got a message that Americans need to hear. But do not vote for him. God, no. Do not. That would be a terrible plan. Bill Cosby today has a better chance of getting a model up to his hotel room than a Democratic candidate running on a platform of taking away guns could beat Donald Trump. That's just the truth. I mean, a sad truth, but a, a truth nonetheless. Look, for Be Less Stupid, I'm your host, John Hotchkiss. If you found this video worthy of your time, please share it on social media and tell your friends about the channel. And if you would like to show your solidarity with other liberal Democrats who support free speech and a woman's right to choose, please go to our website and get yourself a Be Less Stupid t-shirt. Thank you all again very much for watching. For Be Less Stupid, I'm the host, John Hotchkiss. I'll see you next time. During these chaotic times, with America's fate uncertain, independent liberal voices have never been more vital. And no one on YouTube gets you closer to the facts, closer to the action, closer to the Democratic candidates.